Hey everyone, welcome back to I Teach You Science. We're gonna do more cluster questions today. If you haven't watched the other ones, I definitely recommend you go watch my other cluster question examples before this. Do me a favor, spread the word, give these videos to your teacher, text them to your friends so we can help as many people as possible with this new Earth and Space Science curriculum. This today looks like we're starting with the moon, so we're gonna see how these go. And again, I'll rate them on a scale of one to 10. We haven't found any 10s yet in our series, but you know, there's still time, so we'll see. So this says the effect of the moon on Earth. Earth's moon is the only celestial object beyond Earth where humans have set foot. It is the brightest and largest object in the night sky. The moon makes it the Earth more livable by moderating the wobble of Earth's on its axis, leading to a relatively stable climate, okay? The models below show two different positions of a person on Earth six hours apart. We'll highlight that. The relative height of the ocean tides at these positions are indicated. All right, so this is just a question on tides and it shows the Earth's rotation. So essentially, if the moon's staying in the same spot as the person on Earth rotates, they're being put through the four tides. So they're at a low tide here and then the Earth rotates. So now they're at a high tide and they're saying it takes six hours which is an estimate so we'll just stick with that construct an explanation using evidence from the models to support the claim that tides on earth change cyclically sure so we could just say cyclically just means it happens over and over again so we could say since tides actually i don't like that since well, we'll just say we'll compare it to earth rotating because that's the cyclic event that i really think they're asking for so since the earth rotates once every 24 hours the tides change cyclic and predict predictably is that a word predictably in 24 hours, there are two high and two low tides. So that was just content. I, that was an easy question, honestly. That's a two out of 10. Number two, the moon is moving away from the earth at two and a half centimeters per year, okay? Which explanation correctly describes how this increased distance from the earth would affect the tides after a million years? So that's a million times two and a half. So that's two and a half million years, two hundred, two and a half million centimeters away. So what's going to happen? So when you increase distance between planetary bodies, the gravitational attraction decreases. So in three and four, we're not going to have greater gravity. That's not going to happen. Gravitational force will be lower. That's right. But if low tides are lower, that would actually be wrong because low tides would be higher and high tides would be lower. I know that kind of is weird to say, but essentially the tides aren't really going to happen as big. So a high tide wouldn't be as high and a low tide wouldn't be as low. Like the tides are going to kind of like even out. So the best answer to this is going to be probably one. The difference between the low tide and the high tide will be smaller. If this was the low tide height and this was the high tide height, and this is right now, if the moon was further away, this would be the low tide height and this would be the high tide height. So the difference in height between the two would be less because the high tides wouldn't be as high and the low tides wouldn't be as low. So we're going to go with one. That's kind of hard. I would rate that a six out of 10, uh, maybe a seven out of 10. Uh, I'd say that's a seven out of 10. That's pretty hard. Okay, the Lorentz Tidal bar uh, Barrage in Western France is a dam-like structure built to take advantage of the cycling of tidal waters. The model below shows the position of a turbine and the movement of the tidal waters. So they're showing the river. This is the turbine. Yeah, okay. So let's see. Which set of terms constructs a correct explanation that describes why humans have built this barrage over the Lorentz River? Oh, okay. So here we go. So it was built in Northwest France because of the availability of access to... Uh, fresh water, because it's about the water, not fossil fuels. 
The structure creates hydroelectric energy, so that's the only choice we have there because we have already eliminated three and four. This structure creates hydroelectric energy that decreases emissions of greenhouse gas. Yeah, we don't want, this is going to save pollution right here, that would otherwise be generated from non-renewable resources. So this is going to be two. This question was real easy. I'd say that's a three out of ten. All right. Oh, we got some moon phases here. The moon influences tides and is visible from the Earth in different phases. The calendar below shows the moon phases seen by an observer in New York State for the month of September 2025. The name of the phase and the amount of lighted portion visible from Earth is indicated. Okay, so we got first quarter, waxing gibbous, waxing gibbous, waxing gibbous, waxing gibbous. Okay, full moon. There's a full moon here. Then we got waning gibbouses to new moon. Where is new moon there? That's two weeks apart. So it's about two weeks, and then the next full moon would be another two weeks later, and the next new moon would be a month later, about. Identify the date in October when a full moon would be observed. So this is September, so it's about a month after this full moon. So if this is the 7th, it's see, it's actually 29.5 days, so rather than going a month, I would probably, you know, they probably would take October 7th, but I'm going to write October 6th. and then use evidence from the calendar so we could say the time between new and full moon is about two weeks on this calendar and then we could say the moon phases take about 29.5 days. So th that evidence supports my date choice. So that was pretty easy. I'd say that's a 3 out of 10. Pretty easy question. The model below shows the moon in four positions in its orbit around Earth and the distances between the Earth and the moon at these four positions. Below the model, claims about the moon's visibility, distance from Earth, and orbital velocity are listed. Okay, so there's four moon phases here, and it's showing that this one is the closest, and this one's the furthest, based on the numbers. And then we got the two medium ones. So this is going to be a new moon. This is first quarter. This is a full moon. This is third quarter. Okay, so let's see what they say here. The amount of the moon visible is increasing from one day to the next. Um, oh, we got to uh, read the question first. Which set of claims correctly predicts the amount of the moon visible, the distance from Earth, and the orbital velocity for the moon during the waning gibbous phase? So a waning gibbous is going to be here. So we're going to base all of our claims from that spot. So we need to know which ones are true. The amount of moon visible is increasing. No. So that's going to be going back towards the new moon. So that one is wrong. The amount of moon visible is decreasing from one day to the next. That is correct. The distance between the Earth and the moon is increasing. Uh, no, it's increasing this way. So it's decreasing on its way back. So that is wrong. Number four, the distance between Earth and the moon is decreasing from one day to the next. Yes. The orbital velocity of the moon is increasing from one day to the next. That would be correct because the closer it is, the faster it's going to go. That's Kepler's law. So it looks like 2, 4, 5 is the correct answer. That is going to be choice 2. Um, I'd say that question was pretty easy. The wording's a little bit weird, so I'd probably rate that like a mm, 4 out of 10. Not so bad. We got eclipses from Vanderpool, Texas. This was... The solar eclipse, annular solar eclipse, and then a total solar eclipse on April 8th. Hopefully you were lucky enough to witness this in some cases. Uh, we got some information about them, which statement summarizes the model and the table that describes three conditions that occur during April 8th total solar eclipse. Let's see. The moon is in the new phase. Yes. So to get a solar eclipse, look, that's a, that blacked out moon, that's a new moon. So automatically we get rid of full moon and full moon. So now we're between one and three. Closer to the Earth, wait, the moon is in... Okay, so we're, we're saying we want to talk about the solar eclipse. 
So, if it's in this scenario here, think about it, the moon is not going to be big enough to cover this, which means we're actually further away. And since the moon's big enough, we're closer to the moon in that case. So based off of it being closer in the total solar eclipse, the moon would be in the new moon phase, so that's good, closer to the Earth, and then it's going to appear larger than during the annual solar eclipse because it's closer to us, so it would appear bigger. So the answer to 6 is going to be 3. It was kind of hard. 5 out of 10. It was alright. Alright, honestly, that cluster was not bad. I liked those ones. Those were fine. Alright, that's the end of this set of cluster questions. I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.